Thank you, Senator Lanza, and thank you, uh, Mr. President, and my colleagues. My colleagues, today was a uh, special day out in front of the Capitol, or in the back of the Capitol here. We had the most important part, a group that are the most important part of our representative democracy, our constituents, our citizens, a very special group of our constituents and our citizenry involved in our representative democracy, of those who put us here, we take an oath of office to protect them, their families, and their loved ones. They were a part of the group that lost 15,000 of our most vulnerable population in this, in this state to the coronavirus pandemic. And they were here with mixed emotions. They were very happy that myself and Senator Serino and Assemblyman Kim and uh, Janice Dean, a uh, bipartisan group of Democrats and Republicans from the Senate and the Assembly were joining them to commemorate and remember their loss and the reason why that loss took place in New York State. In the actions that involved our, in particular, our chief executive at that time, and they were here not only to say, we're here to make sure you remember, but we're also here to carry our loved ones on our shoulders and you on our shoulders, you who are here to stand up, to go back to your colleagues and tell them how we feel about this loss. Tell them that that loss, to the extent that it took place, did not have to happen. And tell them we want to turn this terrible, terrible tragedy which, by the way, it was a tragedy for all our constituents. We don't demean that whatsoever, the loss of life, the econ ec economic impact, the whole nation, the world, but especially our most vulnerable population. They wanted to come here to say, to turn this tragedy that happened to us and our family and our loved ones into something positive for the rest of our constituents in this state. Because this is a bad penny, this virus. And there'll be bad pennies down the road, which our virus is also. Let, let's face it, we hope it never happens again. But we know that in all probability, it will. The last variant has dropped now. And we've got the masks off, and we, we're not doing that much distancing. We're coming out, and people are going grocery shopping. But they know it could happen again. And what they're saying is there are many unanswered questions. And they told all of us who were there to come back to you and tell you, we want the answers to those unanswered questions so we can change the future when this happens again. So we can change the lack of transparency which took place with our last executive on the second floor. And make no mistake, I don't think there's much of a disagreement between that side of the aisle and our side of the aisle of the lack of transparency in a whole variety of ways of the previous chief executive of the state, but especially on the lack of giving us the real numbers, the reason why those numbers took place to the dimensions they did, what the, that executive order on the 25th of that date meant when week upon week upon week we said, this is, lacks common sense. A fifth grader knows when you have a contagious virus with people who are compromised in nursing homes, you don't mandate or require they go into nursing homes. It makes absolutely no sense. They want to know when real science turned into Como science, and the destruction of lives took place. We thought, and they thought, and we talked about that out there, he had to leave. We gave him two weeks. He made a deal. We were going to impeach him. We know what happened. He's trying to reinvent himself. I don't want to talk about him at all anymore. But they thought, and I thought, and I think you thought, we got a new governor. We got Governor Hochul. We're going to get a new commissioner, Commissioner Bassett. We're going to have enhanced transparency. That was the promise. Well, they're here to say you did not fulfill that promise. They did not fulfill that promise. Certainly, this commissioner is not fulfilling that promise because myself, Senator Serino, many of the members in this room, Assemblyman Kim, when she came before us, we asked one simple question in our own way many times. It's a question that's been asked in the past by some very smart Leaders, what are the lessons, our new commissioner to be, that you've learned from the past actions of the previous commissioner in our previous administration? Because we know that history, if it's not remembered, if it's not checked about the failures that take place, are destined to take place in the future. What have you learned? Shock, 
unbelievable shock, her answer. You know what her answer is? Now, you're not going to believe this, but you probably already know it, but I don't know if the constituents know. I'm not even going to read the executive order that the governor made about putting people with this contagion into basically people who may be compromised but are basically healthy. I'm not going to read it. Why? But beyond that, I'm not going to unravel what took place in the second floor, in the Capitol, in the commissioner's office, in the people surrounding them. When this governor came in there, there's a new science. It's Cuomo science. I want you all to follow Cuomo science. You know who reported that in the city? The New York Times reported it. People resigned because they wouldn't support Cuomo science. I want those people interviewed. I want them talked to. I want to know what the commissioner and the governor said to those people surrounding them when they made that decision and wouldn't back off it. Now, I said this before about the redistricting. That's something else. But I said when someone lies, the first thing they have to do is tell another lie to cover up the first lie they told. Then they have to tell another lie to cover up the second lie they told to cover up the first, and it continues and continues and continues. That's what the governor did. Because after they were losing their lives and starting to die, he had to figure out a reason to blame somebody else. So who did he blame? CDC, the federal government, the previous president of the United States, the workers, the visitors. Then he got to this point and he said, the numbers are very high. We got to change the way. We're not going to count it like every other state in the nation. We're not going to do that. When, remember this? The constituents remember this. When somebody dies in a hospital, it's a hospital death. Well, if they die in a nursing home, we'll say it's a nursing home death. But they got the contagion in a nursing home. Now think about the logic of that for us who want to change the direction we go in this. If we only said they died in a hospital, we have to do something about that hospital. They're dying. They got No, they got it in the nursing homes. That was the point we were trying to get, which he wouldn't give us the numbers about. You heard what the AG said, 50% under count. Now, the least, I'll give him credit, the least political guy maybe at the higher level here is the controller, DiNapoli, okay? You know, I'm sure he's partisan. We're all partisan because we believe in what we believe for our country. But when he says 4,100 above what the governor was saying, I think you've got to believe him, especially above anybody else who, who's a public servant. So... It was one distortion after another distortion after another distortion. But then he said this, and you remember this, what difference does it make where they die? Do you know what dagger that put into the hearts of your constituents and my constituents who lost their lives? What difference does it make where they die? The difference makes they got the contingent in the nursing home. And a part of that was the research that the Empire Center did. And then the Empire Center, and I was a amicus brief, we said, wait a second, we're going to have to foil. So they foiled. Do you know how long it took for him not to give us the answers about the numbers of deaths? Seven to eight months. So what did they do? And I became an amicus brief. We sued the governor and the commissioner in the state of New York. Judge Kimberly O'Connor, you know where she came back with the verdict? The governor, this is her words, broke the open government law and the FOIA law. You have to give the numbers and you have to pay the legal fees. He gave us numbers. I don't believe they were the total real numbers because he was still saying if you die in a hospital, it's different from... Think of the logic of that. If they got sick in a nursing home, so sick they had to go to a hospital, and an ambulance came to pick him up, and they died in the ambulance on the way to the nursing home, he was going to say, that was an ambulance death. No, that's not going to help us solve this problem for the future or change the direction we take or do something different to protect our, protect our most vulnerable population. They shouldn't have gone into the nursing home. You had the Javits Center. You had the boat at the port. But we need a, a better plan than that. Okay, we need a regional plan, and that's what we're asking. We were asking of the commissioner, do an investigation yourself, and then give us that regional plan of where to put these individuals when the next governor says, our beds are being filled up, and nursing home uh, uh, patients who got COVID who are in there are feeling better, but they still have the contagion. We got to put them in a place, but not in the place where people are compromised and they don't have this virus. That was the point 
of why they want that research and why we want that research done. And then it went beyond this. He wrote a book in the middle of this thing. He was going to be the COVID slayer. He was the COVID purveyor. He created many of these deaths by his actions. $5.1 million. Jacob goes, he's got to give the money back. Well, he's going to fight that because he's reinventing himself. He's not going to give the money back. And then he lied about this being a book, an autobiography. This wasn't an autobiography. This was a piece of fiction. It was full of lies and distortions. And to add insult to injury, remember when I said he had to pay the legal fees? Well, he's indemnified. He never paid the legal fees. The taxpayers of New York State and the family members who were out there today were a part of their tax dollars paying the legal fees because he was indemnified. That's another bill I got to change that for future, for future governors. Then he added more salt to the wound. He said, uh, I had all these volunteers. They happened to be state workers in my offices around it. But they volunteered. Well, they didn't volunteer to do that. Absolutely did not volunteer, many of them. Uh, they used taxpayers' dollars to do his bidding. What is this all about, this amendment? It's a piece of legislation embodied in this amendment, bipartisan, with Assemblyman Kim on the other side of the building, and Democrats understand the reality of this. That says we'll do an outside, independent, bipartisan, nonpartisan commission with subpoena power. And let the chips fall where they may. Let them investigate those people the Times said left because they didn't like Como science. They wanted real science, and that's not what they were getting. There were a lot of other people who stood up to support these individuals. One of those is Janice Dean who has done an unbelievable job of getting this information out to the public and to the media. And uh, I don't care what the weather is in New York. When Janice Dean is in New York, she always brings rays of sunshine. Let me tell you that, especially for those family members and for the loved ones they lost. We thank her very much. We thank my colleagues who I think feel the same way but maybe are not going to support something like this. If you can't support this, bring out your own bill to help your constituents, because many of them are around this state who lost their lives, who want us to do that independent investigation to protect, to make, give some meaning to it. There's not much that gives meaning to what, good meaning to what we lost here. But this would give some meaning if we can get to the real bottom of this and get a great understanding. So when this happens again, and it is unfortunately probably going to happen again, we do it the better way the right way. We don't make excuses. We don't lie about who's, who, who we put in nursing homes. We do the right thing and have a plan prepared. Uh, Mr. President, I ask you and my colleagues to support this amendment if we can because it's on behalf, as I mentioned at the, right, uh, at the beginning of this uh, presentation I made, it's on behalf of the most important part of this representative democracy, the people we took an oath of office to protect, to serve in the best of our ability, and keep them uh, safe in this state. So I ask you to uh, move this and support it and uh, re remove uh, what you've said uh, is inappropriate about it. Thank you so much.